Don Amici was a disarmingly modest man, quiet, thoughtful, not what you call a show business type. And yet he had a career in radio, movies, television, and on the stage that spanned more than 60 years. Now, that doesn't happen by luck alone, it takes talent. And though he was long taken for granted, Don Amici was a very talented man. This is the movie that made Don Amici a star for the second time in his life, Cocoon. His comeback began with a plum roll in 1983's Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Ralph Bellamy. How you doing? It's Fair Ball War Veterans of Change. A moment needs a life. I have no money to give you. Please. He got this part at the last minute, a replacement for Ray Milland. Fate obviously was smiling down on him. It was his first film in 13 years, and it was a smash hit. How many people in no matter what age bracket they're in, 20s or 30s or 40s, can put together two pictures in a row like Trading Places and, uh, and uh, Cocoon, each which have grossed close to $90 million. You know, what are the odds that that happens when you're in your 20s or 30s, let alone when you're in your 70s? So, Cocoon won him an Academy Award, and his stately countenance was unruffled even by his flamboyant presenter, Cher. But remember, by this time, Amici had been in every facet of show business. He studied law, but turned to acting instead and became a radio performer in Chicago. Movies caught up with the handsome, mellow-voiced actor in 1936 and soon he was part of the 20th Century Fox roster of stars. He worked frequently with Alice Faye and Tyrone Power, and even stood up for Power as best man at the actor's wedding to actress Annabella in 1939. Moving mighty fast in this wind. Amici became a major leading man in films like In Old Chicago. What the devil do I care about Warren and his gang now? The only thing that matters is that we're together. He also proved himself an able, like comedian, in the sophisticated Midnight with Claudette Colbert. You'll give me the honor of driving you around while you look for a job, huh? Yes, sir. And for that, you pay me double? Oh, and a great big daddy tip. Oh, that sounds like good business. What do you say? I say no. He even sang well, and in Down Argentine Way, he serenaded Betty Grable in Spanish. Then he became part of pop culture, when he played the inventor of the telephone in the story of Alexander Graham Bell, with Henry Fonda in 1939. Your voice through the wire, I understood what you said. What did I say? Tell me. You, you said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. His comedy prowess was reaffirmed by his long partnership with Francis Langford on radio and record albums as the hilarious Battling Bickerson. And that reminds me, I need some money for a new dress. I can't give you any money this week. That's what you said last week. Well, I kept my word, didn't I? <laughs> and after years of stage and TV work, he re-emerged a star in the 1980s with a remarkable comeback in feature films, TV movies, and guest shots. Amici not only won new fans during this period, he won the affection and admiration of his newfound colleagues. Ron Howard directed him in Cocoon. But he was really from the old school. He was very hardworking, very disciplined, pretty tough on himself. Um, I know that the, the breakdance sequence in Cocoon was something he was a little concerned about, and then when we started filming it and he saw that he could actually do quite a lot of it, he almost became giddy. I mean, he seemed to like everything about being around a movie set. Joe Mantegna co-starred with Amici in one of his richest latter-day roles as an Italian shoemaker who hits the big time in Things Change. Mantegna remembers the moment Amici was offered the role over lunch. Don, the old pro, this guy who's been around for, for, you know, all those years, looked at me and says, Joe, if I accepted that, would that be all right with you? I mean, he was actually asking my permission if it was all right to accept this role in this movie. And I thought to myself, my God, what a... What a I could only hope to have the kind of class and, and, and graciousness and, and um, class that, that this guy had, you know which he certainly had his whole life. Don Amici just completed a role in a new film with Whoopi Goldberg, so we'll have one more performance to savor. And there's one anecdote I want to share with you from his comeback film, Trading Places. He was in a dressing room sharing it with Ralph Bellamy, who he'd known for many years, and Eddie Murphy, who'd only made one movie before. And Bellamy said one day, Don, how many movies have you made? Don said, well, I guess 49 up to now. Bellamy said, that's funny, I've made 99. Eddie Murphy popped his head in and said, hey, between the three of us, we've made 150 movies.